just kind of miraculous that here in, in this huge city with light all over the place, that it is still possible for people to get a telescopic experience that tells them there is more. Now, uh, you take a kid who grew up in an urban environment, you tell them to look up in the night sky, and what are they gonna see? They're gonna see the moon, a couple planets, a couple bright stars, and that's it. The consequence of, of not being able to see stars at night or the celestials is that we really become separated. And I think it just makes us feel that we just are here on Earth by ourselves, right? We're not alone in the universe. There are many other galaxies that we share space with. It takes dark skies to see them, but once you see them, you never forget them. I would like my kids to grow up and be able to see the Milky Way somewhere in LA County, and that's my goal. The issue of light pollution is becoming increasingly more important as our reliance on artificial light is also increasing. The changing technologies and going from an older incandescent lighting to the new LED lighting is also creating unintended consequences for light pollution. This is the kind of pollution that if you can control the source, it goes away. There's no lengthy cleanup. It's also tough because there's literally millions and millions of decision makers, all who can create light and use it in different ways. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, attention to this issue right now, it, not just among conservationists, but also out through the lighting engineering groups that are being called, you know, responsible outdoor lighting. The effect of the basin and the light pollution that's generated from all of the 88 cities and certainly downtown Los Angeles really affects the rest of the county. We are on item number eight. This is the de novo hearing on proposed amendments to the Los Angeles County Code, Title 22, Planning and Zoning to establish a rural outdoor lighting district. Our rural outdoor lighting ordinance was put into place to retain that rural character where you can actually go outside at night and see a dark sky and recognize certain stars or planets when they might be available for viewing. The goal and idea of the Rural Outdoor Lighting District and Ordinance was to do these things that we've been talking about, protecting the view of the night sky, protecting and reducing the impact on, on wildlife, and maintaining a particular ambiance for these areas. We're looking at a relatively large light dome from a local source that really doesn't need to be there in terms of the um, amount of light that's being reflected. You know, it hurts almost to, to look across the field. So if we can keep the lumen levels down, the intensity down, use subdued lighting, use motion detector lighting, you'll be helping yourself, your neighbors, and our environment. The fact is, astronomical objects are just gloriously beautiful. It's that person's eye at that time through that instrument, and that power of your own eye seeing something that you haven't seen before is very, very Im impressive to folks. So the middle of the three large ones is the Sea of Tranquility. That's where the Apollo astronauts landed. Okay. In any language, wow is wow. That's so cool. The real thrill is for little kids who have never looked through a telescope in their lives and they see the moon or they see the moons of Jupiter. And it's like, I think it opens up a whole new world for them. So welcome to the uh, January Dark Sky Night at the LAAS. Uh, how many new members do we have, or how many first timers? Big Venus twinkling above the tree right yeah. behind yeah, there you there. Is. Yeah. All Twinkle's right. Oh yeah, I see, uh, yeah, I see Venus, yeah. So over the past year or so, we have been talking uh, in great detail with folks from the Los Angeles Astronomical Society 
about the effect of light pollution and how we can utilize our existing regulations and maybe even strengthen them in the future. Part of that has been, frankly, an education for the county planning department and staff. Just on a whim, I said, you know, let me invite them out to see what we're really passionate about. And they were just wowed. They looked at the light dome that was coming from the Santa Clarita Valley and how that obscured part of the Milky Way. And they said, okay, we get it. We understand why you're so passionate about fighting light pollution, keeping it from encroaching onto dark spaces. You know, all of history, you had lunar cycles where it got dark and when the moon wasn't up and you couldn't see things, maybe you had a little starlight if you're lucky. And now there are places that never, ever even get dimmer than the full moon. Fordstone Canyon Overlook. This is a site where I've sort of tracked the conversion of high pressure sodium to LED street lights in the city because we can stand up and look out over the San Fernando Valley and see the change in the color of the lights and, and how that happens over time. One of the things we worked long and hard on was what color temperature to use that would achieve what we call the sweet spot. The sweet spot at which we give the lighting we need to the community for safety, and it also allows us to put a light in that's attractive and pleasant to the eyes. The worst type of lighting, unfortunately, is the bluish white type of lighting that you see emanating from many LED lights. And that has the most deleterious effect on human health, on wildlife, as well as the night sky. So the LEDs we install are all dark sky compliant. They're all the Altadena community is a fantastic example of how outreach can really make a difference on a project like this. And what we've learned is that done well, the goals of saving money and safely lighting streets for humans, others, and the environment is achievable. But it's equally true that over the past decade and a half, many cities ran into problems leading to expensive retrofits. From the beginning, when we worked with LA County Planning, we, we really became aligned with their goals and their vision in bringing dark skies to the communities in Los Angeles County. These are opportunities in different communities to come together around the issues, identify them, and figure out, you know, ultimately win-win solutions. And we can do so much good by simply figuring out how to do good lighting as opposed to lighting in a way that wastes that energy. At the end of the day, we had almost the full universal support of the community and we're uh, using that model in other communities to make sure the outcome is the same. It's just a friendly education piece, but we think that's going to go a long way towards reminding folks of the importance to minimize their use of artificial light. And they have easy to follow uh, light mitigation strategies. Those are simple steps within the mailers that you can follow and implement. Don't use more light than you need. You know, point the light where you need it. Only use it as long as you need it. So things like timers and motion detectors. We're also working on uh, potentially some education forums to go into schools and educate students about the importance of light pollution. Because we do know that light pollution has a significant effect on the natural world as well. The sky has a lot to do with what happens on Earth. It's not just the protection of people, but it's also telling us how to be in the world, like so when things had to happen. The ceremonial circle, that's what this is. We do naming ceremonies, our, also our solstice um, ceremonies, all inside here. The stars gave us times to harvest, there were times to 
plant. There were times when we got together and all indigenous people that were in this region too would look up the stars and they knew when that time was. The fact that we don't have these dark skies, it throws the rhythm off of, for all the relatives that are living here, not just humans, but everybody else too. I have lived in LA County for 30 years and I have never been to a Mount Wilson Observatory. Uh, so to be here and to actually have the opportunity to see beyond our own small world in LA Basin and understand that we are part of something much bigger than ourselves is truly a privilege. So what I'd like to see is in our second century of regional planning for LA County that we focus on getting back to the basics. And part of that is a reduction in light pollution. Sahi mai hi sunku ale we hil hol awai iku a will hil at aki wo they dance in the north, they dance in the south, they dance in the east and west. Ikuti woon, ikuti woon, oh, oh, oh.